לא, אבל זה בגלל שתמיד שאני סוחב תיק. סתם. אתה רוצה להקיז? לאבחן אותך קצת? לא, אני מת כבר, זה אני צ'י. אוקיי, סו. So abdominal diagnosis, so it was really the early uh, days of the, abdo the abdominal diagnosis. Uh, Yamamoto used it to work with the epsilon and later on the cranial nerve, okay? Uh, like we said before, when he found the neck, he really try not to use abdomen if he, not, he don't need it, okay? So also we are mainly use the neck diagnosis. We use the abdomen diagnosis in two situations when like my terrible story from yesterday, when you don't have neck diagnosis uh, available for you, or when your patient lie down and cannot stand, sometimes it's easy to work because uh, neck diagnosis, you need to do it when the patient lie down, you need to be more uh, skilled with that, okay, a bit, because it's changing a bit uh, that structure here and you really want to do it at the start, uh, you want to do it uh, when he's sitting down, okay? When all the muscles are a bit in a high tonus, okay? When it's lying down, it's changing a bit to the diagnosis. You can do it, but it's a bit more uh, complex, okay? So if he's lying down because, uh, I don't know, a paralysis or something, he cannot sit down, do that. Uh, but... As we mentioned, Yamoto took it, took part of it from uh, Shiatsu, hard diagnosis and so on, and shifted a bit for his understanding. And uh, so it's like, you see, if, if you are doing that one and that one together, it's like 90% fit, okay, between them. Okay, it's not always fit. And so we are going to the neck if we are thinking about what to do first. Um, before approaching the point, I will mark a couple of areas here, a couple of structures. So we want to find the ribs here, okay, all the... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I told you two on me, you are too sensitive in this thing. It's your sensitive times. <laughs> okay. Ah, it's always nice, <laughs> this part of this. Okay, if you want to see that. It's just a common reaction of patients. <coughs> yeah, I, I'm trying not to draw on my patient. <laughs> okay, so you want all these uh, 8, 9, 10 mm. ribs going towards the sternum. Uh, okay, both sides. Okay, and you want to find the xiphoid. No. Okay, xiphoid. I want the anterior superior edex spine, the S ASAS here. Okay. And I want this line, the linea alba, okay, the midline, friend line. Okay. <laughs> No. Okay. Now let's go to the point. <coughs> On the red line, linear alpha line, we have a couple of points. The upper one is going to be hard. Show you that bigger one. Just below the xiphoid, okay? It's hard. Okay, like when uh, 15. In the between the, the xiphoid to the navel, just in the middle, it's ran 12. So it's going to be the stomach, is it? Between them, that will be the pericardium, okay? The stomach is ran 12, you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did it quickly, yeah, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. 
in the area of REN5. This is also Sanjia. As you see, most of them are move points of, yeah. of this area. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And the old area of two, 2 and 3, okay, just a bit below even, 2 and 3, uh, from the previous bone and up, it's the bladder. Okay, so let's yeah. do it like that. Heart, pericard, stomach, sangel, and bladder. Okay? Now we want to be on the area of the stomach meridian, okay? The tutsun area, okay? Or the, this border of the rectus abdominis here. Okay? You have an, uh, four points in the four direction of the, of the navel. One, two, three, four. Okay? That's going to be a bit confusing. If you go 45 degree to the right and up, that will be lung. It's the opposite of what we think. Okay, this is lung. 45 degree to the left, that will be the liver. Okay? 45 degree down and to the right, this is small intestine. Okay? And 45 degree down and to the uh, left is large intestine. Okay, uh, the area of the Okutsu yeah. area. Okay. Okay, around stomach uh, 27. Plus minus. Okay, so we have lung, liver, small intestine, large intestine. Okay? From the SAS, if you fall inwards, the area of gallbladder, right? Gallbladder 27, 8, around that, you have the kidney. Okay. Okay, so kidney you have twice. Okay. Uh, in the early days, it, it started <coughs> with that, checking the kidney and the most sensitive kidney, that's the side of the epsilon that you work with. Okay, so if you're working with the abdomen, sometimes you don't need to work with the LA4. You can do, that's what he did before he found the LA4 and developed the neck and so on. So if you work with abdomen, you can work also with the kidneys. Okay, so you have kidney. And now I want to go to the area, if, if I'm going from the SIS, like the spleen meridian line, and I hit the area of the, of the ribs here, oh, on this area that I'm palpating over here, okay, just beneath the, the I'm entering a bit beneath, okay, towards the liver, uh, organ for Yamamoto method that's the gold ladder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because in the diagram it looks like it's on the stomach line, so these are really further out, are they? They are, they are actually all this area. I, I will show you in palpation, I'm going inside yeah, yeah. all this area. Okay, okay? Yeah. and also that when I shoot back uh, from the SIS and upwards. Of this area, mm -hmm. but it's really all the uh, below the costals. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? That will be spleen or P, whatever you like to call that. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned in the brain area that you have here uh, brain zones over here also. That was the older brain zones diagnosis area before you develop even the elbows. <coughs> so it's nice also to work with that if, if you need. Uh, we'll try to do it like in green. And careful. So 
Actually, all the xiphoid. Uh, some say that it's the tip of the, like the edge of the xiphoid. Other writing said that you need to palpate most of the xiphoid here. This is the basal ganglia area. Okay. Uh, but you can palpate all the xiphoid for that. And then, if you find that, try to palpate usually the midline. Okay, because that was the original line of the basal ganglia. It's on. Uh, the mid sagittal line from the hairline and like about fourth centimeter into the hair. Okay, if, if you palpate here sensitivity. Now, that's the hard part. The line between, uh, maybe one more color, say that one. <coughs> Take all this gap between the edge of the xiphoid to the the rib, okay? Halfway and up to the this connection here. Cervellum. Yeah. Yes. Cervellum. <laughs> okay. And the half, the bigger half here. This is cerebrum. Okay? A bit more problematic. That's why the elbow is much more easier to work with. Okay, it's too small and, and too vague, this area. Okay, and David also a big xiphoid. And sometimes you will see that the xiphoid is hiding to the internal area, or it's too small, and it's, this area is a bit hard to diagnose. Okay, so if you have possibility to work with the elbow, it will be more accurate. Okay, but this is the idea. Okay, now how to palpate? Sometimes the zephyr is shifted to the side. Is that any diagnostic? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It, I don't know how to work with that a lot. It's, it's like I'm, I'm trying to manage that, but because of that, most of the time I will go directly to the elbow. If there is elbow, use that elbow by lying down, it's even. It's the same for us uh, because we want them to relax, so it's even better. You won't hold the hand and and uh, ruin your diagnosis, so I will work both sides. Yeah. If you can do that, try to do that. After, I don't have any like thoughts about how, how the xiphoid is taking uh, any role in the, in the diagnosis. That. Okay, so how, how we palpate? Uh, I don't think I need to even to show because you are, you are doing that, uh, I think, more than me. But that, the main idea is exactly like any uh, how a diagnosis or palpation. I, I want them to be totally flat, okay, without any pillow beneath the, the leg or the head and so on. And here I'm going to apply a bit more pressure, okay? I will do like... A, the three kilogram pressure or the one thumb in technique. Okay, I'm going to pull back yeah. in. But yet, you will see that if you are, want to be very delicate, either by, by tapping on this area, you will see a different kind of tension, a different kind of, and, and it's giving you a lot of information. So sometimes I don't need a lot to find the difference, uh, or I can suspect just by patting. Of course, after a big lunch or stuff like that, it's a bit more uh, problematic to start uh, <laughs> pressing on your abdomen. And it's a more gentle area, it's more like private area, so uh, I'm sure I don't need to tell you to ask your patient, to explain the patient that you are going to uh, start diagnose or touch or uh, palpate the abdomen area and a explain them a bit more than a Okay, give me your hand, check what happened here, yeah. because this is much more approachable. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, okay, so get uh, like give him a bit of respect with that. Yeah. Uh, of course, you don't need to do it like on, on the abdomen itself, you can do it with shirt, it's, it's okay, you don't need the skin for that. Uh, but let's run on that. So uh, I'm usually doing that not with my thumb, easier I'm doing that with two or even three fingers yeah. or like that or or like that mm -hmm. okay and I start running so 
I can even start by patting and I can see a bit tension, cold bladder, lung, with the liver. Okay, I, I already know it's going to be sensitive. Okay, but let's do it. So heart. Again, start very shallow and go deeper and deeper very slowly because any time that I will push inside very fast, it's going to be contract and sensitive. Pericardium. Stomach. Angel, bladder. Okay, lung, uh, it's reactive a bit. Okay, liver. So you're feeling it's reactive or David's saying it's reactive? He can say it's reactive, but I, I, I think, think he feels that my muscle contracted when he pushed Yeah, it. you mm. can see that uh, in, in here. I can go and very s softly and, and easily, and Lang is pushing my finger directly. Yeah. So are you always using, uh, looking for some sort of, um, I don't know what the word is, but some tension or tonic. So for yeah. example, if you find an area that's uh, depleted, you drop straight through. That doesn't you dis discount that. Yes, if it's not sensitive to him, so no. Right, right. No, okay. no. I, I want reaction. I want yeah. a reflex. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, kidney, when kidney. And like we said, gallbladder, I will take all this area. I, I'm usually doing that with this yeah. area and start palpating inwards. Okay, so that's why I don't know if it's spleen, stomach, it's really all this area. Right, right, right. Okay, and spleen, you can, you can see that this is much more reactive than that. <coughs> okay? It's tricky if they're ticklish though, because the reflexes are ticklish yeah, but, reflex. But Do you account it? Do you include okay, it? Okay, so... First of all, I, I'm trying to get them to use, uh, to get used to my touch, but ticklish is also a reflex. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you see that there a certain zone is more ticklish than another, I, I will think about maybe I need to work here. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's uh, another kind of stagnated area. Mm. Okay, there is a situation there. And this one is just like that because it's yeah. a bony area and palpating right and left, starting the search, not pulling that a lot because it's mm -hmm. going to be sensitive. And just like tap at that and that, again, it's more like pressing in this area. Yeah. Okay? For your, if you don't think about cranial or epsilon, that's the place that the cranial will be much more easier to work, technically, just for us. Okay? I, I'm holding the lung it's much more easier to go here and start, okay, counting my uh, that, counting my uh, numbers, and then yeah. go and needle that, and do that long, uh, I'm over, I'm exerting, but uh, like that, and then I'm ever, my back is failing, okay? So I'm working a lot, if I'm doing abdomen, I'm trying to do a cranial now, okay? Yeah. That's it. Are you going to say anything about 